made it. Okay, come on. Well, guys, we're out here. We're out of the sawmill, and as you know, I hang out here quite a bit. And uh, although I got a lot of other jobs on the go, I try to make time for getting out here. Coda's out roaming around. If you have a look here, I got one heck of a job in front of me here. I got all these off cuts that I got to do something with, and I think I know what that is. I'm going to cut it up and use it in my maple syrup evaporator for the spring. So I got to get around to that and I got to do it soon because I think they're calling for snow tonight. So that's probably going to put the uh, spark under my rear end. I also got all this stuff kicking around. And if you're ever wondering what those off cuts look like as wood chips, that is them. So, uh, you know, that's decent stuff. But I got one heck of a pile of that stuff. And then over here, it looks like dirt, but it's actually not dirt at all. It's... Uh, it's the actual sawdust. You can see I got one heck of a pile of that stuff too. So I got to do stuff with this. But unfortunately, with these temperatures getting right down below zero at night, and I'm talking zero Celsius, uh, it's probably going to freeze. And I won't be doing anything with it. But let's get back under the cover here because it is pretty wet out there. At least it's starting to get pretty wet. And where Coda is, you guys see him off in the distance. He sort of sort of makes his way back to the house which is quite a walk if he uh isn't enjoying himself so uh, we'll see if he comes back so here's the deal today this baby right here is a woodland mills hm 130 i've talked about this a heck of a lot i've shot a lot of videos with it i've had some ups and downs with it more ups recently than downs but i really like it i have no affiliation with woodland mills in the least i just think the product's pretty good now what i want to do today is bring your attention to things you have to consider if you're looking at buying one of these now i was probably like you and uh i thought to myself gee i can make my own lumber i got wood available to me life's going to be great well that's that's perfect and that uh that was the reality at that time since i bought that there was a whole bunch of other things that i came to think of that i would have liked to have known before i bought it the first thing was how difficult this thing is going to be to get out to the spot you're putting it in i wish i would have considered that the first time around before i assembled it way up at my house and then had the challenge of getting it out here the woodland mills the actual mill unit the the engine component with the bandsaw and everything that isn't hard to move that i just hooked the tractor to put it in a trailer and brought it out here what was challenging was the fact that i assembled the base with all the rails and the bed part at the house and had to truck it all whatever 17 feet of it out here so considerations think about where you're assembling it and where it's going to spend its time cutting wood if it's not on a trailer do yourself a favor assemble the bed of the mill at the location you're going to be cutting the second consideration you should make comes down to how you're going to get the wood where it's going to be cut now i have a tractor and you guys have seen it i like that tractor does a great job that brings the wood and puts it basically wherever i want it to if i didn't have a tractor the number one consideration i would have besides where the logs are coming from, is how they're actually going to be physically put on the mill. If you decide to mount your mill stationary like I have it here, you better make sure you don't have it too high off the ground, because if you got big logs, you're going to have one heck of a time getting it up there. Now, I know there's ramps out there, and there's cable cranks and come-alongs and pulley systems and all this and that. Well, that's great, but the higher it is, the further that log has to travel, the more rigging you got to do. And for me... If I didn't have a tractor, I'd probably still want it low to the ground so I wouldn't have to fandangle around too much to get the log on the mill. Now, the other consideration I touched on was where your logs are coming from. Do you own a wood lot or are you going to have to buy your logs? If you're going to have to buy logs, better make sure that source of logs is a good one and the price isn't about to jump up the day after you buy the mill. Getting logs in itself, me going out and cutting them down and dragging them here, it costs me time and it costs me fuel. And it probably cost me the odd chainsaw bar and the odd chain, but those are things I'm not going to tell you about. But if you're buying the logs yourself, well, factor that in to the cost of this mill. Because the lumber will be free that you make, but the cost of the logs is going to be an upfront, upfront cost you got to consider. And yet another consideration is thinking about whether you're going to be moving your sawmill around while you use it, or whether it's going to sit in one place like I have it, and you're going to bring the wood to it. If you're going to be moving your wood around make sure you look into the trailer models that are available from woodland mills 
or if you're kind of tight in the wallet like I am, all you do is go out and get an old trailer frame, throw some wood down on that, and you mount the stationary one to that utility trailer you just made. Either way, think about whether that woodland mill, sawmill, is moving or whether it's staying stationary. Now, before you go out and drop the credit card on one of these, another thing to consider is how mechanically inclined are you? Now, I'm not the next best thing to the tool, but I know how to run one. If you don't have your basic tools already in, uh, in mind, uh, maybe you don't have an understanding of how to tighten a bolt down or readjust and realign something, well, maybe you need to reconsider how you're going to set that thing up. Because I'm not going to lie, it wasn't that easy to get the blades aligned the first time. Not saying the instructions weren't good, I'm just saying it took a bit of understanding for me to read over that instruction and then apply it in order to get the blade running perfectly. So if you don't have that ability, that mechanical knowledge, well, better ask a good friend or a neighbor to come on over and get it set up for you. Now this unit here is not a set it and forget it piece of equipment. So you gotta consider how committed you are to maintaining it. And I don't call this a high-end piece of equipment by any means. There's no, no fancy tools or fancy knowledge you need to have. But what you do need to do is think about whether you have the ability to check oil, alter the air filter, uh, change it rather from season to season, whether you can constantly tension a blade, and whether you can change a blade for that matter. You got to think about those things before you drop the coin on one of these woodland mill sawmills. And before you guys get overzealous and start punching in that credit card number into that order form, make sure you check out where you're going to put the base of the mill. Are you going to put it in a location where you can have a solid concrete base so that the leveling of this only happens once? Or are you going to have a setup like I do? We come on over here. Here's my setup. I got a concrete block sitting right on the ground. Wood on top of it and then the adjustment leg. Why is this not optimal? Well, I have to re-level this every single year because we have winter here, the ground freezes, and this gets thrown out of alignment. So if you're going to put down a concrete base, consider that before you bring this home because otherwise a setup like this is going to take a lot of extra time, at least once a year, to re-level. Now that's only if you have winter. Now if you've seen any of my other videos, you know how critical it is to have a sharp blade. Something to think about is whether you're going to replace blades when they get dull and just forget about them or whether you're going to resharpen them. And if you're going to get them resharpened, are you sharpening them or are you paying someone to sharpen? Think about that when you're looking at a sawmill. For me, I found it more cost effective to basically buy brand new when the blade gets dull and I'm buying the blades from Woodland Mills. If you aren't going to do that, if you got someone local who's going to sharpen your blades, maybe set up a uh, little conversation with them so you can figure out what that's going to cost so you can start planning out the prolonged cost of your mill while factoring in the cost of the blades themselves. And if you're considering buying one of these woodland mill sawmills, I want you to think about where your nearest location is that you can pick one of these up. It's not cheap to have them shipped to you. For me, I'm fortunate because living here in central Ontario, I was able to go down to the actual Woodland Mills location and pick it up myself. So if you're going to be buying one of these, don't forget to factor in the cost of getting this mill to your place because this is not a small item. This took up the entire size of my bed of my truck and it would probably put a good, uh, good dent into a little trailer as well. So don't forget that factoring of transportation. Now, you will run into problems, I'm not going to lie. You will have an issue whether it's big or small and you need someone to turn to. One thing you need to consider is, how good is Woodland Mills technical support? I can tell you without any bias that they are excellent. I've dealt with them with that clutch issue I mentioned. And if you check out my other video, what was going on was the clutch was engaging prematurely because the idle on the engine was too high. That wore out the clutch? Well, I didn't know any of that until I talked to the tech, to tech support staff. They walked me through everything, they gave me the time of day, and they replied really, really quickly. That's really good in my books, so don't forget to consider that because we're all going to have problems and unless you're a professional sawyer, you're probably going to need to reach out to someone. And finally, don't forget when you're looking for a sawmill, even if it's not a woodland mill sawmill, you shop around. I shopped around, I looked at all the big brands, I compared all their features, and at the end of the day I ended up with this one, the HM130. Do your research, ask questions, go see the mills in, in action and make the best decision for you. Regardless of what decision you make, whether it's one brand or the other, I think you're gonna be really, really happy because I cut a heck of a lot of wood 
and I'm not complaining about the savings that I'm making. So hopefully you guys really took away some good information from these considerations. If you have any questions at all, you guys know where to put it, just put it down below. And as always, you guys take care and we'll see you all next time.